by Spencer from HID. Good morning, Spencer. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good to have you here at the show. Tell me a little bit about HID. So HID Global, what we do is we power the trusted identities of the world's people, places and things. So we make sure that people can transact safely, work collaboratively, and in addition, travel freely. I mean, that's a, such an incredible wide scope that you do. Um, sure. is, there, is there one thing that the company started out and it's progressed into, or has technology just given you that opportunity to go into all of those areas? Yeah, well, we've got quite a lot of long history, quite a big pedigree, actually. Our business dates back over 30 years. Uh, we go back to uh, being some of the founders of card technology, um, which moves into uh, physical access control. Technology's moved on so many, so much in the last 30 years. So we've moved from, say for example, using a mag stripe to get into a building to using non-encrypted contactless technology. And then also in addition to that now, we talk about moving those credentials onto a smart device, so powering mobile identities. Yeah. Is it scary how fast that technology's moved on? You talk about those mag little strips, the little card to get into a door, and now that would be considered completely unsafe. Well, it's really interesting because actually this morning I did a, uh, a talk and when I did that talk, I started on talking about Moore's Law. And Moore's Law is all based on the fact that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit double approximately every two years. And this allows us to you know, have increased memory capacity. It allows us to have the, the size and numbers on our pixels because it's driving forces in social and technological change. So if we think about that was 1965 when he made that observation and how we've now developed, as, uh, you know, and, and socially we're talking now about things like um, driverless cars, we're talking about machine learning, we're talking about um, um, AI. So, so much has progressed in, in certainly, I would say, in the last 10 to 15 years. And I imagine that we, we think of those things now and, and, and some end users might kind of feel, that's a scary world that we're about to move into, but it was presumably scary back in the late 60s to the 70s, you know, that transition was, was massive back then as well. Yeah, most definitely. I think so, and, and I think one of the biggest things is, is trying, when we go and see end users, and we go and start talking to end users, we start to talk about the whole security culture and how that we um, instill that in security culture within their environment. And one of the big things that we try and to enforce and, and talk about is about uh, trust and privacy. So what, when we talk about our solutions and we talk about the security that we have in our solutions, we try and make sure that we enhance that trust and privacy, because that gives the employee confidence that they're secure within their building. I was going to say, there is a lot of things now where, you know, there is this facial recognition, we're all, everyone knows, we'll talk about location services, people know where we are at all times, and, and, and really it's for our safety as opposed to any kind of hindrance, but I feel that people want to know that that information is trusted. Yeah, most definitely. And I think it's really important to make sure that your employees know that it's it's trusted data and also it's private for them. So we can take it for example that we have a solution such as location services. Now location services, what it does ultimately is it's looking to give the, uh, the end user building occupancy management, making sure they've got data to know who's in their building at the right time. And that's not just employees, that could be visitors and contractors that come onto their site, so they know they're not going into restricted areas. Now with location services, the credential that you hold and you walk around with is actually anonymized. So you're not tracking an individual per se by name, you're just tracking somebody human walking around the building. Yeah, yeah. So it's knowing where people are and if they should be in the right place at the right time. It's protecting your environment and your business, presumably. Yeah, most definitely. It's always doing that. And also, even if you look, think about an emergency situation, if, you're, if you need to get out, you know if there's people left in the building or if indeed someone's just left their card, but you know where that person was when they left that card at the last moment. Long gone are the days where we signed into a book and then realized, is that person in or out? Um, let's talk about what's new for the show for this year and why IFSEC International is such a big thing for you guys to be at. Yeah, sure. So um, I think um, IFSEC is a, just a fantastic show for us to uh, demonstrate and showcase our latest and greatest products, not only just to the UK market, but also the, the European market as well. We have many customers coming in from the Nordic region, from Eastern Europe, and it's wonderful to see them here on the stand. What we're showcasing is our latest technology and latest products. So we talked a little bit about location services earlier, and obviously we want to talk about um, how we can help people 
um, manage their, uh, their data, their occupancy data a lot better, managing emergency solutions as well. But also as well, we've got some other new products. One new product that we launched is our latest biometric reader. I think we should, we've got some stuff around here, right? Let's yeah, we have a little right. glance. Yeah, sure. Take us around and talk us through if we can have a little glance. Very busy on the stand today. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So this is our latest biometric reader that we've um, we've launched in uh, in March this year. Yeah. So there's a few things which are really important about this biometric. One is basically using the late, latest technology by HID. So it's powered by CIOS technology, and that's the latest um, encrypted technology from card to reader. So there's actually a reader inside this as well. But also in addition, what we have is that we have a reader that can just use fingerprints, which is just templates. So in some environments, people only want to use a template. So they just can present their finger and it'll give this access into the building just using a template. Now the issue around that is that that template needs to be stored on a database. Yeah. And some organizations and some individuals don't like that data stored on their database. And there's also can be issues um, around protecting that private data. So what we do is we keep the, 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 um, the actual credential on the card itself, on a plastic card. So what would happen is, is that you would enroll by using your fingerprint, and that fingerprint would write back to the card. That template would go on the card. So your information stays with you, but allows you the access? 100%, and that's private and secure because you're holding on to that data and your own information at all times. Now, one another interesting point about this reader is um, the sensor that we use. The sensor is, is a Lumadime sensor, and that's uh, a sensor which is owned by HID Global. Now, the beauty of this um, uh, sensor is that it reads every single time. Now, a lot of sensors, what will happen is, is they'll pick up on dirt on your finger, or maybe um, you know, a bit of makeup, or maybe you've got indents or scars that have been there, and it doesn't read every time. What the Lumadime sensor does is it reads minutia points underneath the fingerprint. So actually every time it reads your finger. So you can use it with makeup, dirt, even wear a thin latex glove and it will still make the read on it. I'm still scared why you would need to walk into your building with a latex glove, but that's a different program. Let's not go there. Um, that's an incredible future technology, isn't it? Is that just a, one of the signs of where we're going to in, the, in, in this world of security? Yeah, most definitely. And I think there's huge trends in biometrics. You know, we talk about how maybe two years ago, most people on their smart devices were just using a pin code to access. Yeah. But quite seamlessly, we have all seem to now use a biometric to access our smart devices. That could be fingerprint, facial recognition or even iris recognition. So I think that we see a huge trend now in biometrics moving forward. And certainly we want to be ahead of that to make sure that we can provide the uh, technology and products for our partners. You, you talked just, uh, just a moment ago about how the, the information will stay on the card and that's great because those people that don't want that information out there. Do you think that's become more accessible and we, uh, we allow that more now because of our smartphones, use our scans, our fingerprints, etc. Do you think we've become kind of part of that world that now we don't worry about it as much? Yeah, I think that um, from a consumer perspective, I think we can be easily led by technology a little bit more. So if we want to have the latest device and the latest way of accessing our phone, I think we tend to be led a little bit more as a consumer. But I think within an organization, when we're part of that organization, I think as long as new technology gives us confidence that our personal data is private and secure and that trust is there, I think that there is definitely a place for it within the workplace. Spencer, absolute pleasure. Fascinating to talk to you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you indeed.